Um, today, I'm going to talk about um, the nonprofit that I co-founded, Fourth Wave, here in Sacramento. Uh, Fourth Wave is an accelerator for uh, female technology entrepreneurs um, across a wide variety of uh, verticals. Um, this is our second uh, time running uh, Fourth Wave here in Sacramento, and this year we ran it in partnership with the Carlson Center um, at Sacramento State, um, and we're just uh, really pleased with um, that partnership. Um, we and and today I'm going to talk about Fourth Wave. I also wanted to bring you know share a couple perspectives. I'm really excited about the clean tech sector uh, from 2007 to 2011. Um, I invested in energy efficiency technologies with a fund in Roseville. And then as part of the GE Ventures Eco Imagination Challenge, I was lucky enough to work with Sunrun in the early days. Um, and so I, you know, I have some background and perspective I'd like to just kind of share a little bit after we after we speak, speak about fourth wave, which is the primary purpose here. Um, Fourth Wave was actually started in Los Angeles in conjunction with uh, Mayor Garcetti's uh, Women's Technology Initiative. And when um, Fourth Wave uh, came to Sacramento, it was part of uh, the Rails grants. If you remember, um, you know, a few years ago, uh, the city of Sacramento was, and I guess they still are uh, pro providing Rails grants. And so in 2017, a Rails grant was given to Fourth Wave Nancy Perlman, who'd founded that in, in LA, and uh, looked to bring it to Sacramento. And that's when I became involved in helping bring up Fourth Wave um, in Sacramento. And uh, one of the things is really recognizing there's been a lot of the, the, whole, the thing that the, mo the biggest challenge is for women um, led technology companies. And having been, you know, in investing with, with Intel Capital and then, and then others. Um, since the late 90s, I've obviously kind of saw some of the barriers that women uh, had, and these are mentorship and access to, to scale capital. And so fourth wave here in Sacramento, we really chose to focus on, uh, on, those, on those two pieces. The third piece that we'll talk a little bit more about that I feel is also unique is that um, in, in the whole mentorship dynamic, we really focus on leadership and culture building, which I think we all know most organizations cannot scale and grow without um, leaders um, that have the abilities to do that and, and the self-awareness to do that, and then building cultures that are sustainable. And we'll talk a little bit more about, about what we do in that realm as we move forward. You know, there's also a really good ROI um, uh, case for uh, investing in women-led companies. Uh, the Kauffman Foundation has done, you know, studies that have shown that women-led companies tend to be more capital efficient and have higher returns. And so it's really given that uh, women currently uh, receive under 5% of the venture capital, um, there's a big economic opportunity, which we're seeing a lot of the investment community start to recognize with focus on increasing their portfolios um, in terms of uh, diverse founders. It, here in Sacramento, we're, we focus on um, women-led companies that are ready to scale. So really we focus on um, companies that have traction and by traction that can be they have a product they have IP they have revenue they have investment so there are, there are a number of great programs in our region that focus on early stage I have a concept I have an idea and I need to get my business model canvas we're not that we're you have a company you have products you have typically all of our um virtually all of our 13 in this last cohort have products, most have revenue and investment already and are all uh, pursuing this full time. So that just sort of, you know, kind of puts where we fit in, in, in terms of the ecosystem. Uh, we started uh, our partnership this year with the Carlson Center and uh, that we expect to be a five-year partnership. So we have kind of a consistent platform to run the program um, every year. 
uh, this year uh, because we had planned to launch um, in May uh, with the traditional in-person model. And so obviously we pivoted and decided, uh, did a full virtual program. And since we uh, were doing it virtually, we decided to open up uh, the program for uh, women outside of Sacramento. The majority of the 13 were from Sacramento. Well, now I'll, I'll tell you a little bit about more about who participated. Um, but we also had um, a number um, from outside, from the Bay Area, um, a few from Southern California um, that have an affinity for Sacramento. We had a government tech company out of LA and some others. So we also saw that um, we had value for uh, women um, outside of our region. And um, that was a great learning that if we hadn't gone virtual, we, we wouldn't have, uh, have realized. Yeah, so our structure, uh, tell a little bit about the program. Um, by the way, we had targeted to have 10 in our cohort. And we had so many great applicants that we ended up selecting 13. So that was a really positive. Um, when you think about, you know, women in technology ready to scale, um, it really bodes well for the pipeline um, that's that we have um, both here and um, outside of uh, outside of our area. We match. So it's a very personalized program because most of you, if you've had a uh, a business of any size, you know that you have unique issues and problems in scaling that aren't easily, you know, done in a, you know, vetted and worked through in a group setting. So our whole model is matching, um, um, I don't know if the slide went away, but that's okay, is, is matching um, uh, mentors to each of the, um, each of the cohort members. And so we are lucky to have um, business mentors uh, we have over, uh, well, we had 13 that were one-on-one -on -one in each, uh, each woman's uh, vertical sector with experience. And then we also had su subject matter expert mentors in a variety of topics from accounting to IP, to uh, legal, to go to market, to PR that they could draw upon. So we have a strong mentorship model. In addition, um, as I said, we have a leadership aspect, which uh, is building self-awareness and leadership skills and the ability to build a culture that is sustainable. And so we had six leadership coaches that um, participated and we did group leadership uh, trainings as well as each uh, founder got a one-on-one -on -one leadership uh, coach for the 16 weeks, uh, we ran the program. So we ran the program from early August through uh, November 20th, which was our, um, our final event. Um, when we look at gap analysis, what, the, what we do in phase one is the, the uh, entrepreneur really works intensely with their business mentor to identify what are the key areas that you need to make progress in to scale your company. And often that means being ready for a next round of capital, but it also can mean, uh, you know, getting your sales to the next level, um, getting your, uh, you know, MVP completed, um, getting your first distribution agreement, things like that. So each, each, uh, each, ment each mentor works with their uh, mentee and identifies roughly three to five areas that they need to work on. Um, through the 16 week and beyond, because as we know, some of these can happen faster or, or, or take longer. Um, and then we work with them to help to fill those, fill those gaps. Um, the other thing that we work on as most accelerators do is their, um, their plan for access to capital, what type of capital is appropriate. And then what uh, what materials, presentations, so forth, do they need to have in place to, uh, to access that capital? So that's, these are all elements of the structure of, of the accelerator program that we, we run. We have also, we also feel it's important um, to partner um, with uh, the ecosystem. And that's why I think it's great. Thank you for inviting us here today. Um, we really seek to be a partner um, throughout the Sacramento um, ecosystem. As I said, we partnered with um, 
the Carlson Center, um, the city of Sacramento, we were really excited to have Mayor Stein Steinberg do our um, kickoff event in August. And then we recently ran a panel on the future of women entrepreneurship with uh, Julia Burroughs, who with the city of Sacramento leads um, policy on women's issues and has deep experience in, in uh, women's issues in the city of Sacramento. And we really look to partner with um, organizations like, um, like Clean Start. I know we just had Egg, um, Egg Start reach out to us. Um, we wanna build, you know, build those partnerships so that we can um, serve women in a variety of uh, sectors and, and, and partners as well. You know, one of the things that I'm gonna just focus on on this slide is beyond the mentorship, we use something called conscious leadership. Um, this, we use a curriculum from the conscious leadership group um, consciousleadership.io is their website. Um, I'll type it in in a minute. Um, and we have a, a couple coaches from there. Um, they have been uh, pretty well recognized. Um, uh, companies like Asana, um, Whole Foods, um, Athletico, um, uh, a lot of the YPO groups are now using it. It's it's a it's a very uh, compelling. Uh, culture uh, tool building to building companies that are win for all cultures. So um, this is really a way for leaders to think about how can I build a culture that's sustainable for my employees, my community, my customers, and my investors. Um, not just a, 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 you know, a very strong focus on investors. We believe that you have to, as a leader, um, build a culture that's going to be valuable to all the all these constituencies and um so that's that's a, a key one of the key tenants and something i think that that differentiates us a little bit from some other accelerators yeah so what are the, you know metrics are always important so you know what are some of the metrics that we're tracking um our goal is to increase funding in these companies in our cohort um our estimate um, is five to 25 million over two years in participating companies. Um, increasing, and we're tracking that. I'll talk a little bit about, we did a 2017 cohort um, that raised just over 15 million um, in two years. So um, we net with this cohort of 13, we think we can be on the higher end of that, hopefully. Um, uh, we wanna increase obviously job creation, um, up to a hundred new jobs over two years. And then increasing the diversity um, in the Sacramento region of technology companies um, with, with female leaders. And uh, we think that's uh, in, important as well. And enhancing the region's reputation as a place um, for diverse companies. We, we've already had a, a nice article um, from our first cohort in Forbes and with our, um, cohort that we have this time with several from the Bay Area and Southern California um, who are now really, you know, tapped into the Sacramento region, I think we're going to see um, some really positive uh, reputation um, uh, for, for our, our region uh, for entrepreneurship as well and diversity. As I said, uh, for this uh, for this cohort, we did partner with Sac State, uh, with IO Labs, Startup Sac, um, the Founders Institute. We have, we're lucky to have Mariah Lichtenstern, who may, some of you may know, um, who, uh, who is uh, the Founder Institute, runs the Founder Institute here in Sacramento on our board and as one of our mentors. And as I said earlier, the city of Sacramento. And we look forward to, you know, expanding this um, as we go forward with our next cohort. Our, here are our vertical focuses this year. And I would like to say we did have some clean tech applicants. They were a little bit early stage, but they're in our pipeline for the next cohort. And so we, we do very much do want to expand into the, the clean tech space. And we'll would look for your help in identifying and, uh, you know, uh, companies that would be applying. Our next cohort, we expect to have applications in the uh, spring timeframe and begin in the May timeframe. Um, this time we had uh, 
we had representatives from each of these verticals in the 13 uh, in the cohort, which I'll go over in a minute. Uh, just a little bit, just to give you a little bit of a flavor, I won't go spend a huge amount of time, but go through the, the cohort. Um, we had uh, Sydney who develops, uh, has a med tech application for Parkinson's disease to help uh, them walk. She's in the market. She's got international distribution, revenue and investment. Hennessy Stisla, who has a company that um, has, a, has a med tech product for remote blood draws, which has become really important in the pandemic. She was a phlebotomist by trade. Um, so another med tech product. Uh, Catherine of City Gross, as I mentioned, she's in government tech. She has an easy SaaS workflow automation platform, um, was able to get the city of LA outside dining permits done in 48 hours. Um, so uh, she's actually looking to do more in the Sacramento area. Renetta, who's from uh, Folsom area, former Intel employee, has an online platform connecting chefs which there are a lot of unemployed right now um, with families to, uh, to cook, actually cook in your home. And you should check that out, foodum.com. It's available in Sacramento and it's affordable. Uh, Lauren Kelly, who's actually on the faculty of Sacramento State, um, she's a software developer by trade and has, has had a design um, and technology software company for facilities. She's expanded a new solution for airports, um, convention centers, hospitals, um, for setting up their environment for COVID and has a huge pipeline of customers. I think she's doing SFO airport right now. Um, and so we really helped her think about how to get funding and scale that. Sarah Park um, is in the uh, autonomous vehicle space in terms of managing um, parking garage storage, um, and fueling um, and has a large Korean backer and has significant parking garage uh, properties in the US that they are um, fitting out right now. Um, Anu is also in med tech. Uh, she has a, a new cryotherapy technology that's very low cost for uh, cervical cancer treatment in developing countries and is partnering with the um, Clinton Foundation, who has a, a large um, uh, grant uh, for her technology. Uh, Carolyn Pierre, who's here in, in Sacramento, has a unique AI platform for remote uh, workforce feedback. Um, she's also secured investment and has a pipeline of uh, great uh, enterprise customers. Nirja from Spyglass is a fintech platform. Um, for the insurance company to predict future company loss. Um, she has uh, key pilots with some large insurers and she has extensive background in that area and um, significant IP in her AI platform. Camille Richmond here in Sacramento, Sacramento of Hamama, she's out of MIT, she and her partner are out of MIT and have, have uh, developed a way to uh, grow uh, healthy greens, so microgreens um, in your home. Um, and it's, it's really easy. Um, you can get microgreens sent to you. Uh, in seven days, you have um, healthy microgreens. And um, she's, she's growing rapidly. I think we, we saw her hire 30 people in West Sac during the 16 week um, program. Um, so that's, that's, that's an exciting kind of regional um, ag tech uh, company that's that's doing well. Uh, Anna Strauss of Spark also uh, she has a, a AI platform for personalized recognition, uh, which is really important in the remote work environment. Um, and again, she's gotten funding and she has some great pilot customers, and we expect to see her uh, success story here in Sacramento. Amy Wister of Rev Shop, also here in Sacramento, has a personalized solution for if you're shopping for clothes online, which we all have to do right now, to really determine the fit and function. Um, she has a, a special uh, patented uh, solution where you can 
understand if you're going to have a good fit or not a good fit. And so uh, she's got uh, Target. She's working with Target and uh, I think uh, could become a standard with a lot of online retailers. Uh, we have a company, Cintacolor, from San Francisco, which is working with the top salon um, in Sa San Francisco on a virtual platform. So the stylists, because they could not have in-person um, uh, consultations with their clientele, uh, they have a virtual platform where they can have uh, consultations with their clients and then have their coloring kits, their personalized coloring kits delivered right to their doorstep. And that company was growing, as you can imagine, like crazy during the pandemic. And they're finding that, especially in the millennial generation, that women uh, really would kind of like not to have to sit in the salon for two hours and pay, you know, hundreds of dollars when they could get it for half the price and deliver it to their home. So that we think that that probably could be a new platform opportunity even post-COVID, um, although it's helping um, salons in San Francisco uh, stay afloat right now. That's our that's our cohort, our, our, our last cohort. So you can see we had a, a wide variety of, um, of, uh, of, of women doing amazing things. Um, this is just a, a spotlight on if you haven't heard about M Train or Janine Yancey here in Sacramento, she was in our first cohort. And is a good example of, of, of kind of what we what we, you know, really strive for. Uh, Janine was a former employment lawyer. She started uh, a SaaS training solution for HR compliance risk um, areas. And in 2017, she participated in our program. She had not received any investment. She had bootstrapped her company. Um, and we worked with her on uh, upgrading her team. She hired a head of product that came out of LinkedIn. Um, you know, built her development team out, her sales team out. Uh, interesting in that kind of time frame, we had the Me Too movement where most corporations had to really focus on harassment training. And uh, she had uh, a whole uh, series of uh, educational and harassment training uh, content already. So she was able to really focus on that segment and become a leader in that segment. Um, she now has over 800 enterprise customers um, on her platform, including, as you can see, some of the leaders um, in the tech space. Um, she closed a $10 million uh, Series A. She's now tripled her headcount. Um, and uh, it's, it says doubled here, but she, this is, since we've done this slide, she's hired even more um, and was recognized um, as uh, by Fast Company um, as as a company to watch um, in 2020. So, this this is what you know we really are focused on um, getting women in our cohort um, to you know to uh, to do this. Janine was actually one of the mentors for our cohort this time. Uh, she mentored Anna of Spark, who's also in the HR space. And you can't underestimate, you know, building this community of um, someone who's successful and then they can give back to the next cohort who then becomes successful. And then, so we can, we can multiply um, the success that we're gonna have in the, in the community of mentors here in the, in the region. Just to give you a little uh, view of some of our, some of our coaches, um, you may know you may know some from our region, like Mariah Lichtenstern and Barb DeHart, um, and then we have some coaches from the Bay Area as well um, that uh, that have been great, like um, Jane Tite and uh, Tim Peake, who have worked with uh, Dropbox, Pinterest, Asana. Um, so it's great to have um, you know coaches who've really helped kind of large scale ups as well. And yeah, and here, here is our fourth wave team, um, Nancy Perlman, myself, Barb DeHart, um, who's been amazing entrepreneur in residence, uh, Jesse Becker Alexander of the Carlson Center. Dale Carlson is on our board. It's been very supportive. Cameron Law, who runs the center. I mentioned Mariah and Amy Purchase-Reed, um, an investor uh, in the sector. 
I think that's it. Um, so that's about, that's fourth wave. Um, I'm, I'm 